Hello my friends, welcome back to the internet. So today I wanted to talk to you about books that I may or may not read during our time in quarantine. Quarantine is a very uncertain time. I don't know how long I'm going to be stuck inside. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to keep my sanity without diving into fictional and poetic worlds. And so I thought I would share some of the books that I brought with me uh, to my parents' house where I'm currently staying uh, to weather the storm. So yeah, let's see how fast I can do this before the light completely fades away. Okay, so um, where do we begin? <laughs> it's all very exciting. So one book I might read during quarantine and one that I would be very happy to read, I think, is Journeys in the Wilderness, but a John Muir reader introduced by Graham White. John Muir was born in Scotland in 1838 and he moved, he immigrated to the US and became a herald of the conservation movement for the national parks in the USA. And so he wrote several essays um, that are collected in this work, which describe quite beautifully his experience of nature in the US and the really diverse landscapes there. And um, these are places that I definitely want to visit in my lifetime. And since I'm not going to be visiting them anytime soon, given the quarantine, I would love to read about them and love to read this man's poetic writing about nature. Sounds like it would be right up my alley. So I might be dipping in and out of this essay collection sometime soon. Another book that I might feel like reading since I'm stuck at home with my parents is No Exit and three other plays by Jean-Paul Sartre. Now, this title is very pertinent to our collective situation, but more than that, it is the play with the famous quote by Jean-Paul Sartre, hell is other people, and I think that at some point during quarantine, I might just think so. Some of the other plays in this collection are The Flies, Dirty Hands, um, and the Respectful Prostitute. So yeah, maybe I'll read this one. <laughs> maybe not. Another book I might feel like reading is Bird by Bird, Some Instructions on Writing and Life by Anne Lamott. This is a very famous memoir, autobiography type book uh, all about writing. And on the back, it has this quote, which explains the title bird by bird and it goes 30 years ago my older brother who was 10 years old at the time was trying to get a report on birds written that he'd had three months to write it was due the next day we were out at our family cabin and he was at the kitchen table close to tears surrounded by binder paper and pencils and unopened books on birds immobilized by the hugeness of the task ahead then my father sat down beside him put his arm around my brother's shoulder and said bird by bird buddy just take it bird by bird. And if that is not the most wholesome quote you've heard all day, I don't know what is. This book seems like it would be right up my alley. Maybe I'll start a new writing project now that my poetry collection is out. Shameless plug, go read my poetry collection, Unbecoming. It is free of charge. It is uh, on the internet, so you can download it and read it right away if you are interested. And all I ask is that you share it if you enjoy it and that you let me know what you think of it once you've read it. Yeah. Uh, Let's move on. So depending on how I'm feeling, maybe I will be in an existential mood. Maybe I'll want to reckon with death given everything that's happening in the world. And so I've picked up Smoke Gets In Your Eyes and Other Lessons from the Crematorium by Caitlin Dotti. Caitlin Dotti is a mortician who also makes videos on YouTube about death and such things. Um, and I feel like this might be a really insightful book and it might be a really difficult book to read, but yeah, this is definitely an option. One fiction book that I have here that I might feel like picking up at some point is Flights by Olga Tokarczuk. Olga Tokarczuk. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It is Polish. I do not speak Polish. Um, it is translated from the Polish by Jennifer Croft. And it is a novel about travel in the 21st century and human anatomy, broaching life, death, motion, and migration. Um, and I, as far as I know, it follows some very complicated plot lines that unfold and illuminate some of those topics. So it is, first of all, very, very gorgeous. Second of all, it won the Man Booker International Prize in 2018. And third of all, I have had this on my bookshelf for slightly too long and would really like to read it at some point soon. I think if I'm gonna 
realistically read any of the books that I'm going to mention in this video, this would probably be the one that I pick up that I gravitate towards because I started reading like the first page and it just seemed super captivating and I am really excited to get into it. I have a nonfiction book that I feel like it's the perfect time to read since we're all kind of in quarantine might be a good time to learn a little bit about the world that we are living in and how unpredictable it can be and how perhaps predictable it can be. And that is 21 Lessons for the 21st Century by Yuval Noah Harari. I'd really like to take these stickers off, but now is not the time. I've already started the video. Um, and basically Yuval Noah Harari is the author of Sapiens and also the author of Homo Deus. I have right behind me Homo Deus and I've decided I think I'll probably read this one before I read Homo Deus since this one covers more relevant info, um, including technology, politics, despair and hope, truth and resilience. Um, those are all of the five parts of the book. Uh, and as far as I know, you can read any of the chapters in any order and basically just learn about one of the topics that you'd like to uh, explore. So this one seems like it could be really fun read. I also have this version of the book in my target language that I'm learning these days and so I might try to learn some complicated vocabulary by dipping in and out of this one alongside the one in my target language which is currently a mystery. Feel free to guess what language I'm learning in the comments and maybe one day you'll find out if you were right. Now on to poetry. Escape Roll is coming up quite soon. Maybe it's already started by the time this video goes up, I'm not sure, um, but I will definitely be dipping in and out of poetry collections over the course of the quarantine, and so these are just some potential options for poems that I might be getting into. In Defense of Nothing by Peter Gizzi, Selected Poems 1987 to 2011. This one is quite a thick boy, quite a thick collection, and I've dipped in and out of it before, and I remember it being very interesting, I remember it being quite philosophical and very diverse, so I'm really excited to potentially get into this one. Speaking of thick boys, here's a thick girl, Emily Dickinson, The Complete Poems. I happened to get this one at the bookstore literally a week before quarantine started, and I am so thankful to my past self for having the insight and having the foresight to know that I need a collection of Emily Dickinson's complete poems in my life. And oh man, this is like, how many pages is this one? It is 716 pages of poems by Emily Dickinson. Um, I am so excited to use this one for inspiration throughout Escape Roll. I am so excited to use this one um, as escapism throughout quarantine. I think it's going to be super fascinating to explore Emily Dickinson's mind and her complete works. Very, very exciting. Other poetry collections include Classical Poems by Arab Women, a bilingual anthology edited by Abdullah El Uthari. I've started this one and I have read a few of the poems and I do really enjoy the translations. I do really enjoy the poems in here. I love that Someone has created a collection of classical poems by Arab women because especially in the classical world, most of the documented poetry has been from male poets. And so I'm really excited to get into some of this and to explore just a bit more Arabic poetry. Also, 10 Sonnets by William Shakespeare. This is by Candlestick Press and they do these really cute like 10 poems about this thing or that thing. I've bought presents for people which has been like 10 poems about Wales, 10 poems about Scotland, 10 poems about knitting. I got that one for my mom at some point. And so I bought myself 10 Sonnets by William Shakespeare and I think this will be really fun to explore. And finally, This Wound is a World by Billy Ray Belcourt. I have started this one and it was incredible and I'm really excited to see what else this collection has to offer. Yeah. So that's about it. Um, those are the books that I may or may not read throughout quarantine. Please share down below which books you might be reading throughout your quarantine times and I hope that you're all safe. I hope that you're all staying home, washing your hands and taking care of yourselves. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.